we had to um the character's tricky because of what's required of the role frankly um you know he's on the precipice of manhood and you need someone that could you know be put on his heels by someone like Kiersey, a young uh, very intelligent uh young woman and then you also want to be rooting for you know his um <laughs> for him to get with Johanna and that's a that's a tricky is a tricky space to walk because if he's too boyish, it becomes kind of gross and weird. Uh, but if he's too old, then you don't quite understand what's going on with him and Mimi at the beginning of the movie. Uh, and Callum, uh, walked that line. I thought really well, he kind of exists in that really, uh, uh specific place or that, with that, you know, nascent manhood. And, uh, he also has a kind of geekiness, and a lankiness that's nice, but there's also uh, a confidence that he can dig into and find that is uh, also, I think, is really appealing. Well, you know, it's funny. Like when I first read this script, it was around the time I was, uh, you know, it was before 500 Days of Summer. So I think, like at that point in my life, I, I was curious about those events. I was closer to them, and that was about 10 years ago. Uh, and I think the 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 this movie kind of came together really recently. But it is a uh, a vestige of a of a you know a previous phase of my life, I guess. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't know how to explain that really, but it is uh, it is something that's kind of interesting. I think I I this isn't a romance in the same way that Five Hundred Days of Summer was. It was a I mean, it is a coming of age story in a certain way, um, but uh, it is. Yeah, it's it's a it's a phase of life that I think is mm, always uh, piques my curiosity. I guess. Well, I had read it many years ago, and and there, uh, you know, I went into interview for the job, or and this when I was doing music videos, and they, and they didn't want me, they rejected me, uh, and but I always, you know, there's a scene at the beginning of the movie with uh, with Johanna and Thomas where, uh, you know, she's talking about. Um, uh, his mother, uh, and I, I thought that was, scene was a very provocative scene. I'm sure it's in, in some of the press clips, but I always stuck with me. And then um, while I was doing Spider-Man, I was looking through some old meal, e emails, and I came across the script again, or, or uh, uh, an email to my agent about the script. And I was like, and I, I asked my agent to send me the script again, and when I read it in the, in the uh, intermediate few years, the script had been developed and then sort of set aside and it was no longer called the only living boy in New York it was called the only living boy and it was set in Chicago and it was, it had been kind of developed to death and it was, I thought it was so strange. And I, I went back into my computer files and eventually found the original draft of the script. And I said, well, let's, if I would love to do it still, but let's start from the beginning. And we started from the original draft of the script and then I worked with, the writer for a while and we we you know came up with it and once i was done with with spider-man movies uh you know i focused more on it and eventually jeff came on board and when jeff comes on board you have you're very close to having a movie it was a great group of people i mean for for the level of talent and the caliber of talent uh people were incredibly friendly incredibly warm and we had lots of dinners together and uh you know pierce it's a tricky role because this, uh, you know, there's the, it requires a, a deep charisma and sophistication, and somebody it, it perfect is the, or Pierce is the perfect guy for that role. Unfortunately, he he came on board, um, and I, I think it's a cool. You think of Pierce as sort of uh, very chill and very calm, and he is. But he also has so many other colors as an actor, and he has, uh, you know, we get to explore a little bit more of the raging side of his character in this movie, which I, I really enjoyed. And I, I hadn't really seen from Pierce before that was exciting. And, you know, Kate, I think everybody, cause you know, everybody came to the table because they loved the project. It wasn't about making money. It was a, a script that everybody loved and, and roles that people could really chew on. And I thought that was, that made it really fun. Um, and we were, you know, we were lucky to have old pros like, Pierce and 
Cynthia and and Jeff and and then you know Callum and Kiersey as well. It was a great intersection of talents. The Uncle Buster toast is something that was um, it was the wedding toast in the middle of the movie. It's it's a it's sort of the centerpiece and it's, it's a statement of the themes of the film and. You know, I was working with the writer Alan for a long time and we were, you know, messing around with how the movie ends and we were trying to work on that middle section where all these the, the lines of chemistry are overlapping and relationships are crumbling and relationships are blossoming and secrets are being revealed and secrets are, be, you know, lies are being uh, exposed. But then, you know, uh, uh, it, it's a kind of a, uh, a very hot part of the script. And there was a technical part of it. I wanted, I wanted all these things to come together, and, and I needed some words to hold it in place. And we messed around with a lot of different toasts, and then uh, uh, Alan and I were like, well, we need someone to come in and guest on this. And so I called up this guy, Alvin Sargent, who is a screenwriter who wrote Ordinary People, uh, he, he adapted Paper Moon. He's one of the great screenwriters. He's also nine years old and has had enough experience to really look over life and, and come up with something. And I was like, well, this is a perfect assignment for Alvin. And he went out and uh, or I went out and I asked him because he'd done some work on Spider-Man. He was married to Laura Ziskin, who was one of the producers on Spider-Man. And I, he's a great friend and a, a, obviously a wonderful writer. I called him. I was like, "Hey, can you do this thing? Can you write a wedding toast?" He's like, "No, I can't do it. Uh, it's you know, I, you don't want me in. You don't want me involved. I'm not, you know, uh, I'm a hack, and you know, the it's very self-deprecating nature." And so I was like, "Okay, I let him go." And then at five o'clock the next morning, he had sent me this, you know, he read the script and sent me this beautiful speech that was performed by Bill Camp, and uh, I think it encapsulates so many of the threads of the film and uh in a, in a really beautiful way and says something that you know you start thinking this guy is gonna you know make a fool of himself and he ends up dabbling in the profound and i and i really like that sequence but it was a tricky intersection of of you know stating the theme uh tracking the story beats getting the characters to behave in a way that feels that that makes an editing uh that, that creates sort of interesting parallel edits and that uh, that was a tricky sequence to to, to shoot. 